Ladies and gentlemen, I am Tosh. I am here for Art Book DAP. And we're here to discuss, we're not we, well, you're with me. I am here for you to discuss Philip Guston, American artist, born in 1913, passed away in 1980. The two books we're focusing on is Philip Guston Now and Philip Guston Poor Richard. And Philip Guston Now is a catalog of a show that was supposed to be up at this time, but due to the uh, virus issue, it has been postponed or changed at time. But nevertheless, it's a huge retrospective of Guston's work. And Philip Guston Now is really, in a sense, a perfect catalog. It's a great introduction or gateway to Philip Guston's work. What is impressive about Guston is that he moved from figurative art uh, of the 30s and 40s. He did actually mural paintings of, uh, of uh, political or topics of that time. And the first show he did was at the Stanley Rose Bookshop on Hollywood Boulevard. Um, Stanley Rose, besides being like a really hip bookstore at the time, was also at a small gallery in its back studio or in a back space. And uh, Guston's first solo show or first show of his, of his paintings was at this bookstore. Um, I've heard of the bookstore because, one, it's famous, sort of legendary. I've never been there. It closed like in, in the 40s. But my father used to go there, who was an artist, Wallace Berman. And it was sort of the bookstore to go to that's a real hip bookstore at the time. So he had a show there, uh, Philip Guston. And then he um, eventually went into abstract art. And he was quite successful as an abstract artist. His best friend was Jackson Pollock. Um, his other best friend was Morton Friedman, the uh, composer, the music composer. And he, at the time, he was in the height of his commercial powers as an abstract expressionist. But he did something quite different. He went back to figurative art. Art was a narration, art was figures. And that was not a hit at the time. He had a show at the Marlboro Gallery in New York, and it bombed. Collectors turned him down. The art world turned him down. Morton Feldman, his best friend, turned him down. It's very sad. Very sad. But as time tells, and as, was, as he was aware, he did great art. His paintings became even better. His art became better. And to me, the figurative paintings he made from like the late 60s and 70s consisted of, of, of cartoonish figures. He became a cartoon artist of sorts to me. Um, when I mean cartoon art, I don't mean in a high, low cultural thing, but the style is very cartoonish. And his figures he uses are, were, for instance, a, um, the Ku Klux Klan, which were a huge presence in his life as a youth in California and Los Angeles. It's interesting enough, he lived in Los Angeles during the 20s. So again, the figures that he used was these sort of cartoonish, cartoonish images of the Ku Klux Klan, the Klan, but also sort of this one-eyed creature, which is actually a portrait of the artist himself. Usually it was a cigarette smoking or cigars coming out like smoke. And what it reminds me a lot is George Herman's Crazy Cat cartoons. Um, I don't know if you are familiar with Crazy Cat, but Crazy Cat was a very popular cartoon series in newspapers uh, in, turn of the, um, in the 1900s, 19-teens. And it's very surreal. I mean, the narrative is very loose. Even the gender issue of the creatures are unknown at the time. They play with gender. And it looks like it takes place in Arizona or New Mexico, I suspect New Mexico. But also, Guston's landscape, especially in his figurative paintings from the 70s, is actually a surreal landscape. It can't, it's not really anywhere, but it reminds me uh, sort of like the desert to me, or New Mexico, just because of the pinkish colors he used. And it's quite a remarkable artist. He's really, these, these paintings are amazing. So it's very interesting to see his early work when he did his early political paintings. Then he went to abstract expressionism, hanging out with Jackson Pollock, hard drinking, all that sort. And then he turned that away, like overnight it seems, and went back to like figurative art, but in, in the more surreal sense. And um, also, Guston was very political throughout his whole life. And one of the things that upset him 
was a gentleman by the name of President Richard Nixon. And he did a book called Poor Richard. This, this came out, this edition. And this is actually the original version that Gustin wanted to do of these set of drawings he did of Richard Nixon. And it's, it's Nixon with John Mitchell, uh, Vice President Spiro Agnew, and Henry Kissinger. Kissinger draw his image in these books, Kissinger, is basically this glasses, because Kissinger had these sort of dark glasses. So it's, a, it's, a, it's like probably, the, well, it's not the first graphic novel, but it's probably one of the first graphic novels from a, a known artist. So it's a series of drawings of Nixon and Kissinger and Mitchell getting ready to make friends with China. And Gustin was not upset about being friends with China, but Nixon's whole career was based on being anti-Chinese. So the sort of ironic, or he felt that Nixon was being double standard about this, and it, it really made Gustin angry. So these drawings are very charged, very political, his face looks like a penis, his nose is a penis, and his cheeks are like two men's balls. And that's Nixon. Nixon sort of looks that way. And um, <laughs> so this is quite interesting. I have seen a show of uh, Nixon drawings that were way a lot. Um, I think I saw like hundreds of Nixon drawings. But this is only 75 drawings. It's very tightly edited. And I think more effective, actually, is a book than if you go actually see an exhibit of his drawings. Uh, this is kind of a controversial stance, perhaps, but I just feel that Gustin's uh, Poor Richard, his Richard Nixon series, is better in a book form than actually going to an exhibit to see it. And uh, the show, hopefully the shows will happen. Right now we're in the middle of the virus and issues of that sort. And um, I just want to give you one quote that John Cage gave to Gustin, and it pretty much explains his stance and just basically art making in general. This is what Cage wrote to Gustin. When you start working, everybody is in your studio. The past, your friends, enemies, the art world, and love all your own ideas are all there. But as you continue painting, they start leaving, one by one, and you are left completely alone. Then, if you're lucky, even you leave. That, to me, is the perfect definition of a good artist. Thank you very much. And, and please, purchase these books at um, bookshop.org, and we'll have some more information at the end of this video. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.